part of their um, goal in reducing drug and alcohol among students is really to educate parents. And part of that is getting them to the PTA. And so I either think if this becomes too, it's too long, you guys can let me know. And I'll just share with Jan the all long stuff and then just get a brief in the, in the future. And if it's not, then I'll just give it a service. Um, so we covered Jules, which I don't even know how it's spelled. We covered it the yeah, first time. Yeah. I know, it's such, a, it's such an interesting thing. But that um, with e-cigarettes, I know that we were um, invading, we were looking for information on it. Um, they they sent some stuff directly to uh, Billinger, but I got to share with the PTA Council. This is the information the different resources have brought. And some of it's online, and I can send a link at the top of it. So some of it's in Spanish, some of it's in English, but it really talks about um, how does a parent know if their kid is vaping, you know, what are the signs and stuff, how do they know where they're getting it from, how valuable is it, stuff like that, so parents feel that they're able to have it. And then um, the difference in vaping versus cigarettes is that they banned the use of flavors in cigarettes back in. But we, they have it in vaping. And so my kids are vaping with all this flavor, and I think it's candy. And we should all be very outraged by it. I think where I looked all the statistics, it's shocking. Seven thousand flavors, and it also has a toxicity of just chewing on it. It tastes like, it tastes like gum. gum or pellets or candy or something. Right? So they're chewing on it. So that's a um, they did discuss again about the fact that Laguna doesn't have uh, red ribbon leaf as other districts do, and I did explain we didn't have it and what we do. Um, but in the discussion of it, maybe we lose some of it because we don't talk as much about the cigarettes during that time or something. But they just asked if we would look at maybe having cigarette having something else in the schools would look at because we have uh, our student population is much less risk around it than other student populations mm -hmm. in South Carolina. So if they want to share that, then maybe at the very quick they want to share that. Because we talked about the year-long things that we had on the very first time. They, uh, let's see, they also shared a new program called Aspire, which is absolutely fascinating. So it's a DDT-based program. And um, DDT is a very long process, years and years and years. And this is done in eight weeks. And there's a parent portion of it, um, student portion of it. Um, and it's done through Mission Hospital, St. St. Joseph's Health. And it's like Monday to Thursday through seventh grade week. And we go through and DDT is inspiring about giving coping skills to kids to help self-regulate and help go ask for help to advocate instead of sitting there and holding in. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry there's so much to cover a lot of things. Um, they also launched their social marketing, which is raisinghealthyteens.org. And I think they have the stories that she can share out and strengthen numbers. OC.com, and those ones for students and ones for parents. And there's all the social media that goes along with it, as well as they're handing out these guys over social media. Uh -huh. And that. And they have online um, through Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and Google, they have their ads are showing up that basically are showing the numbers in South Orange County. A percentage of people not drinking. And it was, I don't know if I color, I think it was 78 percent, 72 percent, so not drinking. And so it's really like, do you know that the majority of your friends aren't doing this? And so it's that kind of uh, campaign. And they spent a lot of time on this engagement. And they'll report back what the what the responses are in their metrics. Um, they have been holding a date night and other stuff in Laguna. It hasn't. Been as popular as other places, and so they're going to relook to see if maybe what's another option. But that's something I'll connect and resume um, in the dinner. But they did, the kids, what they did, that they have, it has this in a paper. Oops. Excuse me, so you guys might have all seen it, but this was the. Okay, one more. Nice. Do you see it? Okay. And so that was the. Um, Susan News article. Yeah. And so they felt it was still good for the people who were there. They just didn't get as high as numbers as some mm -hmm. other They also have a smaller pool of people living in Maple Grove mm -hmm. than a capo. We looked at per, so we looked at percentages per okay. school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dis districts and schools, right? They yeah. broke it down. 
that was really low compared. And so they're not sure why, but they're going to look for other options. And it could be the speaker doesn't resonate as well, or it could, they're not sure. But they're going to look to see maybe what they can do. Then Dr. Keller provided a wealth of information that was very digestible and had you know, some of the public doctors sitting at the edges of their seats. And um, he was ruling over the fact that he should look through all of this together and, and, and create the social, emotional, in such a big, systematic way, utilizing all his tools. And that's been done over years. Um, and it's fascinating that people came to hear him speak, but Dr. Keller did it. And then uh, two more things. Um, there is, this is public health. And um, this is a, there's, the hospital wants to create a group here, but it's something that anyone can be about, anyone can be part of by just going to hashtag this is public health. Then what it is is for kids and adults to really stop and think, what is public health? You know, what can it be? And um, to create some project around public health. Make sure so that we all are starting to think about what, and demanding public health and demanding support. And I thought there's yeah. Andy, Andy's a public health agent. Give me that back. Uh, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I get that. He said, yeah. So just like and Victoria has a link to it. She can see that stuff too. And so and you just click on it and there's really interesting things that people talk about from, from violence and violence to um, tobacco for chewing gum and throwing down the street. I mean there's a variety of things that people talked about about public health and it was just a thing where and then uh, someone did make a comment when we were talking about marijuana that DEA.org always has fact sheets about drugs. It's, it's a great resource for parents as they think about going to the GA. Like, it's a great resource. And then this one is for Jeff. The hospital also offers a save a life since the last tragedy and stop the bleed by stopping the bleed. And they can actually send their trauma surgeons out. Right. And they already have so many dates booked with them. But they come out and they teach you. Oh, I know that's already part of CERT. Like, you guys learn that? Yes. That's so why I kept asking them if they could confirm it or not. And they said, but these are our trauma surgeons, not paramedics teaching it. So they're very excited about their program. And, um, and, and it sounds wonderful. I just didn't know if you guys were already, was already part of it. But they come out for free and they would teach you guys how by the surgeons coming out and learning. So that's really for me in the morning. It's probably higher level. Okay, and they can say also that they can teach parents, they can teach students, they can teach uh, however we want to use resources. For us, it'd be free, but they would help. It's about stopping moving, stopping moving, but not, but with the pressure not so. <laughs> I have uh, no question. We don't want to know. I have no idea. Okay, but but it was something. And I just That's the fact that the surgeons see them out. And teach you, right? The trauma surgeons can come out and teach. I just thought that's a different thing. It's free service, and if you guys want it to any organization, they would be happy to provide. And that's my. Okay. Yeah, we're working on it. Jan and I went to uh, CCA College and Career Advantage yesterday, and um, a lot of information as well there. Uh, final grant allocation, or the last bit of the grant allocation is going out. Uh, Various schools for various things. Um, key that that if you have any uh, time that you write to our uh, assemblyman and our state senator uh, about AB seventeen forty three, which is the continued funding for CTE. Um, and since that is a state initiative, why they wouldn't fund it is beyond me. But it's the state. Um, we have, there are new fall classes. Uh, the one at the New High School is going to be Intro to Emergency Medicine, which will be a semester class. Um, the, uh, the second class to that is now becoming a year-long class, um, and, uh, EM, or the, yeah, Med Tech, because it, there's so much information that they just, it's not that they're gonna have to do it as a, a year-long class. They have a new accounting class going in that's A through G approved as a math credit for accounting, um, which will be, Really nice. I'm not sure where that's being offered, um, but that'll be out in the fall. Um, they have WASP visit in May. Um, there's a CTE Saddleback Articulation uh, Night, uh, three of them, April 24th through 26th, and our CTE teachers need to go and find out how to articulate their classes so that the kids can get Saddleback, or get community college credit, as well as a letter grade for the class at high school. So that dual, that dual credit uh, articulation is really nice. Um, 
And the last thing that Patty's working on is she's speaking to Saddleback about perhaps using uh, C CCA facilities for career college because they're finding that um, so few kids actually graduate. 28% of California kids actually graduate from programs. Um, how do you how do you address this? And they've found that if you focus on career classes that have specific uh, outcomes, you can exhibit a reason for them versus gen ed, so that they're going to move on somewhere else. If the relevance creates more interest, creates more staying power for the kids. So um, they're talking about perhaps you know using our facilities so it wouldn't be an infrastructure outlay for Saddleback, but then having you know that that ability, and it's more uh, primarily I think more for our um, adult ed, uh, so that they can they can actually see a reason to finish the program. By outcomes, you mean a certificate for either a certificate or yeah, and then and then, and then if they choose to move on, they can. But this way, instead of just some options. yeah, mm -hmm. instead of just you know mm -hmm. spinning your wheels taking nine thousand classes, yeah. you know that don't have any relevance to anything, you can you can. It's focus. It's, it's, it's primarily to, to provide focus. So that's it. So, no, I did bring that back. So oh, oh, okay. This is on the contact with people that are for the 1743. And I have a couple more. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know. 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 Yeah, well, they think about the budget, it really depends. Well, Saddleback's so, right. they want they're thinking of not contributing. Yeah, um, yeah. So, that, that, that's 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 a capitalist decision. Yeah, they don't work that out. Yeah, that's not ours. So, let's see how it works. Okay. Uh, let's see. I just did the endowment, this, the tower endowment, and um, or trustee meeting, rather. It was. Uh, not very many people there. It was mostly district meetings. We all know <laughs> uh, and then a lot of people out of town. Um, but it, it was fun for me to hear, especially, well, you know, Jason talked, and, uh, but especially from Mike Morrison about um, all the things that are going on with Rocket Ready right now and the new projects. And going along with what we're talking about tonight, I was so excited about one that had to do with bipolar and listening to three bipolar speakers and the kids were prepped for it and then they are writing a play about it and they're going to play those parts so talk about walking in somebody else's shoes mm -hmm. they're going to absolutely be doing that and it should affect everybody who watches it also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and one of the what ssf one support? of the out support of the staff that was really exciting. And Jeff's always a hero when the budget's good. <laughs> it was good. And uh, because they made $185,000 um, over the goal of what, 144. So they'll, they trust us to spend it in a good way and just let them know what that is. <laughs> Jill Johnson. Oh, Robin. Oh, yeah. And because Robin's leaving, they. Yeah, they're looking for something new, and they asked what qualities mm -hmm. we thought. Not that Mike made any decision, but just mm -hmm. looking at that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody got thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I tend to be team council, and they just to preparing for the jobathons at the end of the schools, and then the epic challenge was another terrific success. Um, there was a, a CLC is merging with Talk to Local Media. That's the way they found this and wanted the best way to do that. And so they were taking, they were going to be having a meeting to take a look at that. So that would be part of the meeting, becoming part of the general chair of the PTA. There was a lot of uh, information communicated by Captain Fay uh, about that piece of legislation that came back this year mm -hmm. for the person that's wanting schools to start. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 8.30, 8.30, you know, earlier than 8.30. Uh, and CSBA, of course, is, continues to be opposed to that because they feel it should be local controlled, not a state decision. Um, but I think there's a, a, a real piece missing for our students. We have, what, 65% of our kids in sports, and it's they already are 
in class, mm -hmm. and uh, there was some mis misunderstanding, I, I believe, that that we would have any control of the CIF, and that, that they're separate. I mean, they, they set up the times and things, and they don't listen to the state. So there would be, I think it's important that we just recognize that it's not simple, not a simple solution to that. And it's also not that we would be, it's my opinion. So I mean, because I was concerned that a lot of folks were hearing this as if this is going to, to like fix all this stress for kids. I mean, if you can guarantee me that they're all going to be in bed at 11 o'clock with every device they have turned off, that'd be a different story. But I don't, I don't think that that's, that one hour in the morning is a lot of an issue. I think there are a lot of other things going on for our young people nowadays. But I did, and I noticed um, that some of our students now are leaving during fifth period for the context that they need to travel to. And so that's, that's a very complex issue. It's not just a matter of how early we start. And Jen, because you're probably going to be in a different group in the evening. Some of them will be, yes. But sometimes now when they do preseason things, they go and they travel very far because they're looking for things that are out there that they can't see. Which is, that's why our athletic director was five years for us to meet with airline schools. And this, this, this new structure next year will be two years only, so it's, it'll make it more palatable, I guess, for the board to And I read a little bit. Anyway, I just wanted to share that because I think it's, you may hear a conversation around mm -hmm. that about the needs to have to start with. And I think that, I think you shared that before about the, the minutes, because we have to be cognizant of that too. That yeah, there's, the minutes um, of the day. there's all sorts of yeah. issues around structural minutes and the state has a minimum requirement for us. And so uh, any kind of shifts require a more formal conversation as simple as just moving the schedule from there, including contractual. I had the privilege of uh, reading it uh, both out the world and on Moro. Um, special thanks to uh, Debbie Pinner and his class. I've never seen a whole uh, folder of thank you cards from the students. So um, I truly enjoy that time that it's done. And um, uh, thanks to those who were uh, vital in putting that on because it was nice and long. But uh, it's a good opportunity for us. We uh, had an evaluation session at the board, and I um, always feel privileged to be able to work here and provide the board an update on all the good work that we have going on. And many people in the, uh, sitting on the audience over there were a part of the team as well. So, uh, very appreciative of the work that we have going on. And uh, I also had an opportunity to talk about that work at Rotary as well, which I'm a member of, uh, and then a great contributor to our student scholarships. Uh, again, just a little bit of uh, opportunity to brag and present that work. Just highlight some of the great work we have going on from Rocker Betty to the works uh, going on at our elementary schools as well. So, um, again, it's been um, a great time. Uh, I may not be at the next board meeting, um, so uh, I will pass, uh, pass off to Lisa if I'm not here. Um, but I'm going to, with that, I'm gonna pass off to Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, just wanted to also mention IBB training and thank our partners um, with the CSCA and the leadership for engaging in that process. I feel like it's been very successful so far, very collaborative, and we've been able to get a lot of issues out on the table in a short amount of time. And so uh, it's been a very positive experience. Um, also, uh, last Friday, Mr. Collin and I attended the AXA Every Student Succeeding Breakfast at the Bowers Museum and in support of our district honoree, Riley Ray Hall, second grader at Top of the World, who has a rare disorder, but yet has overcome all of the odds and done a great job this year um, she's a shining star in that in that classroom. So it was nice to have her family, her mom and her dad, her grandparents, as well as the school staff there to honor her with all of the other 28 Orange County school districts. Um, it was a very nice event. So I uh, would like to um, thank you for your support. We've had us uh, we continue with our after school training uh, with teacher leaders and we're grateful for their um, uh, we are just wrapping up this year's professional development, um, so we need to complete that in time for testing and make sure our teachers stay in their classrooms for a really important time. So thank you for your support. Thank you. And that, was, that uh, concludes our reporting folks. Uh, we accept for now our principal's report from Mr. Thomas. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right, so uh, good evening, uh, uh, President, board members, uh, distinguished uh, district staff. Welcome to uh, Top of the World, the year-end class. We have a lot of amazing things happening at Top of the World. I'm just going to you know, highlight just a, a number of those things we've got going on. Um, so what we, the big thing uh, that we've, you know, we talk about with the staff, we do have a lot, a lot of initiatives happening. And it's all about kind of tying everything together and, and just kind of, Making sure that they understand how it all how it all relates to each other. So we, we came up with um, a mantra this year of, of uh, that we're going to kind of go through and, and but with, with no place for hate. We're adding we added it on to uh, to to our, our 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 sites this year. We wanted to kind of show how it just ties up, ties into what we're already doing. So we, we label it you know, no place for hate is just who we are. Uh, that's how we rolled it out to the to the students. You see the the poster here, the no place for hate pledge at the beginning of the year. Of course, as um, Sunny Cut was, was nice enough to explain to your study session. You know, every student participated by, by taking the pledge. And then from the pledge, they actually signed a hand and created our tree of respect in the NPR. So by signing, putting your name on the hand and adding to the tree, you kind of sign off with yes, I agree to, 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 to honor that pledge for this year. We also tie into the kickoff each, each uh, flag assembly each month by reviewing the pledge and you continue to kind of keep that idea a lot, and like I said, it tied very nicely into Rachel's challenge. So it wasn't a matter of one more thing. It just, guys, this is this is who we are. You know, we're we're, we're a school that's no place for hate. Um, and with that, we have a number of activities that have happened thus far. Um, as the uh, Rowan on, on the slideshow, the video had shown that she explained the No One Eats Alone Day. And again, it was an activity that we've we've had we've done in previous years, but we like to kind of really kind of ramp it up. And we shared it with Peter Levy about how what what the the, the day is all about. And we added elements to it to make sure that we had everyone included in the process. We had pals would come to the kindergarten and the primary lunches and initiate to get the students to sit with someone else and initiate the conversations and have games for them to play so the kids could be interacting and meeting someone new. And then from there, we went down to the playground and then we had a lot of fun activities for kids to kind of play with someone, someone else. And it was, the playground was covered with these kindness uh, just signs and, 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 and you know, chalk drawings everywhere. So it was a really special day, and, and the kids, it definitely kind of, it really, you know, resonated with, with the students a lot. So that, that was an excellent day. The second one, the We're All Wonders activity. So if you're familiar with the book, We're All Wonders, and there's a movie as well, um, what we did is we partnered up a primary class with an upper grade class, and we had them come into the library, and Mr. Romano read the book, We're All Wonders, and then they created a, an, an empathy activity where they, they participate in being able to, you know, put yourself in the shoes of others and be able to relate to, to, to how someone, the, you know, the, someone who's might be different from you and how it would be to be, uh, to be in their shoes. So you see little pictures of, of if that's one of the empathy activities. And then they went back to the classrooms and they had a, a debrief. There was another activity in the classroom for all the students as well. So again, it's, it's more than just, because the, the, the piece for it to be a, a true no place for hate activity, it's got to be school-wide. But then you've got to have those extension activities where they can really just think about it and, and, and understand and reflect on, on, on the learning for that day. So those are just two of the, the things we've done this year. We're meeting next week to, uh, to discuss about our, our third. So again, you know, no place for hate is, is who TOW is. Um, and then again, we've, had, we've been a PBIS school for many, many years. So when trying to, again, title it, we say, okay, you know, our, our PBIS is what we do. That's just, that's how you act. So it's acting responsibly, be prepared to learn and care for yourself and others. So again, it's not about, well, how does it all connect? It, it is, it, this is just, you know, the expected behaviors that we have for you and that we've had that for many, many years. The next one, again, we, we rolled out a growth mindset last year and we want to say, okay, you know, growth mindset is how we think. So that's how we, we explain it to the students. And we're, I'm really proud of the work we've done with growth mindset. Again, this is year two of, of implementation and we really, my, my goal for this year was to, to keep it going, because again, it's, it's one thing to implement it for one year, and we did a book study and kind of rolled it out, but now it's like, okay, how do we sustain it? How do we make it part of our culture? So we continue to make a big focus. You can see here, we have each month, we roll out a different, a different concept of growth mindset. And what we do is, at the kickoff flag assemblies, we have a, our pals to do a skit to kind of roll out what that, you know, what, what the monthly focus is all about. We also speak at the staff meeting and give the staff some different activities they can do in their classroom. And we have a poster for each month that's up in all the classrooms as well. So it's our way of keeping the, the concepts of growth mindset just alive um, in, you know, in all the classrooms and around campus. So we're, we're excited about the work we're doing there. Now, again, halfway through this year, we showed this video. And again, it's, it was at the end of last year, we did a fishbowl activity for, um, 
for our students, with some fifth graders, just to kind of hear from them how they felt the implementation of growth mindset was for them, what, what kind of impact did it have. And halfway through this year, we played this video to our staff because you realize there's, there's a lot going on. We had the implementation of one and everything else going on this year. We said, okay, we wanted to you know, make them realize this is why we, we want you to continue to do this work. This is why it's so powerful to, uh, to do your work around growth mindset. So if Victoria can play the video, this year. The, 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 the way the rollout is, is what has been done. The first year, the counselor or the psychologist models for the teachers all, all 28 lessons, and then the following year, it's handed off to them. Um, so that's, that's where we're at in that regard. So in kindergarten through third grade, I'm delivering the weekly lessons by the teacher. Um, but the big piece to it, 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 really to it is, again, you know, we're, the, the students or the teachers are realizing the, the value of these lessons, and, and they realize the impact it has on, on the students and how, how powerful it is. And we explained to them about you know, our social emotional work, that this is the tier one. You know, without this solid tier one, best first instruction in, in social emotional learning, that's the foundation. And then we can layer in the supports in tier two and tier three to meet the, you know, meet the needs of the students that, that if they're not met by the tier one. And so one way that we kind of do that, we, we lay out a scope and sequence for the year. And then every about four to six weeks, we check in with the teachers. And we say, listen, we understand that things get, get bumped off your plate, life happens. Um, but we'd like to check in and say, okay, where are you at? You know, based on the scope and sequence, you should be about here. And 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 then they're, they're, and like I said, we're not looking. No one's in trouble. Just let us know where you're at, so that we can come in. For instance, like in kinder, it's about two two classes where maybe two lessons behind. So that the, the school psychologist went in to help them to kind of catch up so they can get back on pace. So that's kind of our way of making sure we have fidelity to the program and that we're continuing with the goal of getting you know through all those lessons by the end of the year. So, it, but it's it's constantly just. 
the, the, the biggest piece is the teachers see the value, they understand how powerful it is, and then just about providing them with supports to, to continue to kind of have those lessons happen weekly. So we're, we're excited about the work, and again, that's how we know, you know at TW, that's how we become better. And then, again, continuous improvement, there's so much, as you know, uh, there's there is so much going on, especially on elementary campus when we're, we have all different initiatives taking place. So big year this year with the rollout of Wonders, um, the teachers have been troopers, and I can tell you, from September when we just started the program and giving those uh, those assessments to the students and they were like, oh my God, my, my kids, you know, failing, look, the, the grades are getting on these assessments because the tests were much more rigorous than what we've, we've been exposed to in the past. But and I told them, I said, listen, just like math a couple of years ago when it was a big learning curve and initially the kids were struggling, but once they got the understanding of how, how they're being assessed, they will, they will shine. And we're seeing that now as well, where really the students are understanding, you know, and, and again, it's an online assessment, start, even starting in first grade. So just getting them familiar with that process. So we're excited to see we've really made growth and now we're continuing to look and say, okay, let's identify what are our, our must-dos and, and the best the best way to you know deliver this instruction, what's the biggest bang for our bucks. So we're doing a lot of work in our MTSS groups, continuing because anytime you get a new a new adoption, I mean they feel you can spend four hours doing everything in that in, in that wonders uh, TE. So it's okay. You need to make sure we pick out the pieces that are most valuable. And we understand we really only have about two hours a day to spend on ELA. Um, excited about the continued work with Next Generation Science Standards. Uh, special shout out to Jackie Cohn. She's been great about providing our teachers half day in services to help them with the uh, just understanding and, and transition over to NGSS. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of work with the History of Social Science Framework. We're piloting right now. A number of teachers are piloting at both elementary campuses, and then we'll be doing uh, continue the pilots next year, and then the teachers are going to have new materials in their hands. But again, we're doing the work now to have them understand what the shifts are before they get their hands on the curriculum. So we have, again, a lot of work in that area. Um, we're doing, as, as Chris shared in his presentation, both of us are doing uh, less, we're actually providing professional development during our staff meetings about the standards of mathematical practices, the eight standards, explaining what they are and giving them examples of how they can bring that to their class. The, the, the goal and purpose of that is we want the students to know, okay, I'm, I'm doing this lesson. I want to, I understand that this is an example of, of you know, st standard four modeling with mathematics. So getting them to kind of add that academic language into their lessons is, is so powerful and just how, how that looks kind of going kindergarten through fifth grade. And then now, you know, with moving into next year, we have a big focus on kind of, you know, we haven't had true or, or you know, campus-wide training on PLCs in many, many years. I actually asked my staff meeting two weeks ago, you know, who had been through the formal training, I think three or four of my staff out of 20, you know, 24, 25 had been through it. So we're spending a lot of time, we're, I'm picking one grade level rep, and we're going to do some work kind of planning and preparing for what the training's going to look like in August, and then continuing to find some different PD opportunities for people to kind of refresh that and really kind of refocus our, our PLCs so they can be most effective and, and data-driven and really just make it as effective as possible. So we're excited about that work, just one of the few things we have going on. Um, and then... It's been, I know this, Jason, you know, th this was his mantra about our focus, about relationships matter. That was, that was one of the first, when I first came to, to the top of the world, I actually sh read this book, If She Only Knew Me, and, and, and played the, uh, the, uh, the TED Talk, uh, Rita Pearson, um, Every, Every Kid Needs a Champion. Um, and this, so this has been the focus since, my, you know, since four years ago. The, the book, actually, I got the book, If She Only Knew Me, when I was uh, teaching in Long Beach. It's an amazing book about understanding your student. And if you only, if you would only realize that, you know, his life outside of school is X, Y, and Z, or the reason why he didn't do his homework was because he was, you know, taking care of his younger brother or things of that nature. It, it's really powerful. And it's all about the idea of connecting with your students and getting, and getting them to know. And again, I love this quote that, you know, kids don't learn from people they don't like. So it, it's powerful. So it is all about kind of making those connections and, and with the students because that's, that's where true learning happens. And I know I think Dr. Keller shared that data as well. You know, Hattie's, I think it's 0.72. It's, it's, it's extremely powerful. Um, so we're, we're excited to continue the work. And then, so this year at our, our kickoff staff meeting, I shared this data. And again, it, it's, it's amazing. This is from the LCAP survey last year. What the one, of course, that stands out to you is uh, teachers, these are from, from students. Again, it's just our fifth graders. But the teachers talk to me when I'm upset. I mean, it, it just it pops out of the page. It's, it's, it's amazing how, you know, how different it is from, from the others. So this was a big focus for the work we did this year. And, and I'm proud to say, I just quickly looking at the data, but I made the slideshow before I looked at the, the LCAP data that came back. We're at 78% this year. So our current fifth graders had 78% felt that the, the, and it was, the language was tweaked slightly to help me when I feel upset. Or it was, instead of talk to me, it was a little different, but it was getting to the same point. 
So that was a big focus, and we had a lot of different teachers do different things. We're bringing in just you know classroom time and then circles and then times where they can have those classroom conversations. Um, and so we're, they've been incorporating that. So we're excited about the work that we're continuing to do. But ultimately, it's that work is never done. I mean, you just have to continue to, to focus in that area because that's 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 what makes you know uh, the most meaning for kids. Um, and again, with uh, the relationships matter for our staff, the Phil Boyd training was amazing to kick off the year. So we've been working on, okay, well, how else can we continue that work? So we're excited about a lot of different, the monthly staff morale things, but we came up with a, a get to know me board because we realized you might be a classified or instructional aide in, a, um, in, the, in the preschool, and there's, no, there's a good chance you've never crossed paths with, with the fifth grade teacher. So we were saying, like, how can we kind of, kind of share that? So we made a bulletin board in the staff lounge and we interview about four teachers or staff members a month and put them up with pictures, kind of sharing the likes. So, and so it's, it's a fun way. For one, learn something new you might not have learned, but then also kind of put a face to the name and get to know something you maybe, maybe never would have heard before. And of course, um, staff uh, enjoy happy hours. So that was a big kick in, in the fall. We'll do another staff happy hour and we try to use many just different events and getting, getting the staff together. So we're, we're excited about all the work uh, that we're doing in that regard as well. And just... Uh, there's amazing things happening at the top of the world, and I welcome you to come up and uh, enjoy the view and, and come, and come uh, spend some time with us. So at that, thank you very much, and I'll take any questions you may have. I, I just want to thank you for the growth mindset thing, actually. So I've learned just from what you all have presented, um, ways to speak to my own kids mm -hmm. more appropriately. Not, yeah. I'm proud of you, it's you part of yourself absolutely uh, yeah i mean just yet just the stupid word yet <laughs> is has such power when it's when you think about it and i just and so i, I really truly do want to thank you um yeah. for that because it's helped me in my own relationship anything i can do to help you Kate, yeah i know that's <laughs> <laughs> not what i need it i yeah, need it. It, it it takes a village it does um I love that the students are becoming more comfortable making mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really yeah we actually I, I, I led a, uh, in the last flag assembly to kick off celebrating mistakes. mistakes. We, I, I led this activity where all you know, all 600 kids kind of partnered up, and it's it's actually from uh, Ronnie Levine from EQ Schools, where you um, you get you have a partner, and then you have to say, I say one, you say two, I say three, and then you say one, but you count one degree back and forth. And when you make a mistake, the two partners jump up and say, woo -hoo! And I realized, well, okay, this, this could go south really quick with 600 kids in, in the NPR, but it was, it was amazing. We were able to get through it and got them back, and it was a great way to kind of just, for one, it's an activity that teachers can do in the class, but it was a quick way for, all, for the, the concept to really sink in. We just didn't have time that week for the pals to do a, to do a skit, so it was a nice way to kick off the idea, the idea of celebrating mistakes, and, and it, it, went, it went off. So that's some classroom management skills, so it was, uh, it was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you... Uh had this in mind with that video, but it was really obvious that the students are comfortable with the concepts and the language, mm -hmm. and when they can use the language like that, it can really tell us that, that we've succeeded mm -hmm. in helping them understand and how to have a growth mindset. So that's, it, it, sometimes, you know, you just give lip service to something, but I mean, it's really evident that, that, it's, that there's fidelity there and, that, and it's helping them. Mm -hmm. that was, so thank you for sharing that with that's us. It's, uh, there's a lot to, to do, but like you said, I mean, it's the little things to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. And just 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 the, the shift in language. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. And we have like what you were speaking to. We have a, a poster that we shared with, with the parents and the staff. It's about just just shifting your praise, just how you praise your child. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just little things like that. So. And then I did it that, and then also the, the student who said, "Paul's oh, going really fast," and so I thought, and I stepped in their shoes and thought, "Oh, maybe I should slow down, <laughs> right, and help them." Oh, empathy. Yeah. <laughs> right. See whether they are seniors. <laughs> exactly. Well, like I said, that's it's being powerful to see you know when the students kind of you know sort of are playing up. And so, you know, yeah. You're we're going to see the evidence. Of it. And like I said, this is just the first year for for second step campus wide. So mm -hmm. um, it's gonna, we'll continue to see the benefits of that as well. So. Well, and the grit too that showed up. We know we'll see it because we said with character counts and Rachel's challenge when those started, mm -hmm. and we have seen students at the high school level that are kinder. Yeah. than what we used to see in years past. And so it does that repeated messaging. It makes a difference. Yeah. And it's uh, something really valuable that we can offer. So thank you thank very you much. Much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, going to the consent calendar. Are there, other than minutes, which we need to address in various fashion, <laughs> sorry, with Victoria's guidance, but other than that, does anyone need to pull an update? Just this February 13th. Right. Well, we have to do all of those. Okay. All of okay. So the um, a motion for consent calendar items B through N. So, are there any questions? Is there any public comment on the consent calendar items B through M? Is the technology with you address anything about technology or does it have to be about the contract? The contract. The contract. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So now we go to the minutes. So we first have a motion to approve the February 9th special meeting minutes. So moved. Second. 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 So uh, we were all there, so that's not. Oh, we were? Yeah, I just said we were. Because it wasn't decision making, it wasn't action, it was a it's in place. Because do you also have to say Yeah, there was no action taken. But we were discussing making edits to policies. Right. So to bring forward. So I think they should have stayed with that. Question on this information item? The breaker advance? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I can't have an answer. 
her question was she yes, asked what about advance. breaker advance so oh. breaker advance I, uh, identify students that are not taking AP and honors courses but are uh, good candidates and probably don't see themselves in that light we hosted uh, we piloted this course last year we'll have it again this year um, and many of the students that joined us last year will also provide leadership roles in this year's class um, but it will be students to help them see themselves in a rigorous curriculum so they might uh, consider taking an honors or AP course How do they um, uh, our office is working with the high school to identify students both with data and uh, teacher recommendation. Is it four weeks since the summer school? It is not. Thank you. This is the same. Pardon me? It sounds like it's Sherry, can you come? Sorry. The AP class that, that you're, the honors and AP class, it's a four, it's not a four week class. It's a, it's a one week course. One week class. And is that going to be at the same, in what, what point of, of the four week, the five week summer school? It hasn't been finalized. It's high school students, so yes. freshmen through. Is it incoming eighth graders identified as well? No, I believe we start looking at data um, ninth and tenth graders. Any questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you. Um, you now move to our action items. Uh, action item 15 approval of resolution number 18 01, school safety. Dr. Gloria. Um. As we know, um, school safety and supporting our students' uh, social emotional needs are uh, paramount to uh, to us as a, uh, as a group. I uh, appreciate the support of the school board and our community on this specific topic. Uh, many districts around us uh, have adopted resolutions uh, that reiterate our stance and are going to come in and board adopt this resolution uh, that is the support of our ongoing work around social emotional support for our students in school Can you public comment on this item? Safari, excuse me, which is a PTA advocacy group. Um, 
I have six incumbents on my list and I have two new people, but these are the applications for me that um, had the most sub substance. And I mean, I their applications had to be needy for me to, um, even if they were an incumbent, I didn't feel like more time and details were taken. So these are my recommended eight. I gave everyone a copy. Um, and it tells you what school district they're from. from. Thank you. We will need to read the names. Yes. Okay. Sure. Oh, do you want me to read the names first? Okay. So go ahead and read the names. My nomination um, is Sharon Wallen from Irvine Unified, Francine Sinto from Tustin, Catherine, Kathy Moffitt from Orange, Sherry Kowalki from Huntington Beach City, Candy Kern from Cyprus, Lynn Davis from Tustin, Rosemary Saylor from Huntington Beach City, and Lauren Brooks from Irvine. Is there any public comment on this item? Board questions? Um, I just wondered if you thought it was important at all to have representation from different districts. Well, I did. I mean, I did think about that. For for me, the districts tend to be really pocketed. The applications. I think there's only four I didn't uh, nominate. So, um, but these were, in my opinion, the best candidates. Yeah. And they, they vary around. I mean, we have two, a couple from Tustin and a couple from Irvine. Right. Um, but they go up to Huntington Beach City and Cypress, which is over by Centralia. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And there are others who are continuing on. The board itself, I think, has a certain election, yeah, and some will maintain our different cycle. Here's the other, yeah, there's a longer list. Yeah, right, right, so yeah. I saw that. Yeah. So the the furthest sap is really Irvine, isn't it? Yes. Well, there are some from Catholic, yeah, there were, and there were Newport East. There were, the other ones are Newport Mesa, two from Newport Mesa that I didn't, uh, Saddleback Valley, had, this is Huntington Beach Union, that's a high school, and Anaheim. But Cypress is right here. Okay. okay. I thought I, I had that. more in the application if you want to, yeah. I did. The content of the application. Because there was one that I thought was really good that's not on the list. Okay, fine. I have a motion, please. With the motion on the floor now, because you, you can raise that as, as an issue. I mean, you don't, you had someone else that you heard thought was a major case for that person. Okay. Um, the person I was thinking about is Charlene Montoya from Newport Mesa. Mm -hmm. And she, she had a pending application. No, <laughs> I just, uh, no, it wasn't yeah. for me. I just base things on kind of experience and things they've done. Um, she's she's not an incumbent, right? She's mm -hmm. right new, she's so yeah, new. she's relatively new. Oh, I wow. think she's really well sm spoken at some of two different conferences actually. Okay. Plus, she went through the governance mm -hmm. part with us. She has been available. I don't really know her well, but I've called her about different issues because it's kind of a similar district and she has gotten right back to me and had a lot of backgrounds and I just thought, and she also came from being a teacher in Newport Mesa. I thought she was getting that And I've done the same thing for her, so. So we do have folks from Zellweck that are continuing to work, which is kind of And one in, one in Capital, Right. I mean, I just thought, and I've met some of the other ones too. I, she just really, really stood out. So, what is that? You know, is anyone else? Okay, thank you. Here, this is the first one. She's on the fence about. Uh, I mean, I to be honest, for me, there's not. I mean, that I I went through them. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, I went through them, and yes. And she, it's not that she's not qualified; it's that we had too many that were qualified. Because even the application that wasn't as needy, I could see hard in the application. But I feel like you need to go back and make a needy application. That was mine. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
Right, that's true. That's right. Yeah. We're not <laughs> used to teaching you, we're we're right? So, I, yeah, but it was more, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe it was me and the balance of what I saw in the other ones versus mm -hmm. what she did or did not have. So, okay. that could be. Well, I'm trying to finish. So, I'm looking to do the background information. I don't think they're going to deserve to say it that way. Oh, okay. They actually didn't say to me what they, how they represent. Yeah, I just wanted to learn when I was Thanks researching. Right, what we're going to do, <laughs> and, and then I realized as I'm researching it, and I googled them all, um, that I met a bunch of them, and then of course in interacted with several of them. So, um, yeah, thank you. I, I did going along with what you're doing. I did in talking to one of them. She said that the the incumbents worked really well together. She was hoping that we could choose an incumbent. Which we did. Which we did. Which we did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready to vote? So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Peggy, for your work on that. The next item, action item, is item 17 positive certification of the second annual report. Dr. Dixon is turning. <laughs> It's okay with you, President Pickers. I'll do this from my regular seat. Okay. It's a very short report. I'm going to highlight and focus in on the changes from our last adopted budget. Um, all of it is very positive for us, and I appreciate the board's support for improving our fiscal strength this year. I think you can see that reflected in all of our financial reports going forward. The major changes in revenue uh, since our last is we actually had an uptick in the amount of property tax we received by about a half percent. So that amounts to a budget adjustment um, for this current year of about $225,000 more than we thought. Um, federal revenue slightly decreased just based on the grant reward notices that we received. And other state and local revenue that most of us like a lot of the school power grants uh, increased based again on those award notifications. You can see our expense, I apologize for the small text, but you see that the red and the blue, that's our staff costs, salaries and benefits costs, 75% of total cost. Um, decreased slightly just from a little staffing movement here and there by about $1,800. Books and supplies decreased by about a little over $40,000. And our services and operations increased. However, what I will mention with services and operations, those are contracts that we open up the current year that could cross over fiscal years. So not all of it could be spent, but we just have to account for it as a worst case scenario in the budget. And the capital outlay decreased by 92,000. A lot of that has to do with us delaying some of the projects to summer because it's a more ideal time than what we had planned. Some of the highlights of the governor's budget, which we know will change in May, um, is the full funding of LCFF. Um, that's a benefit for us in the sense it contributes towards our uh, basic age difference calculation. We need to have uh, Less than 2017 to get to the 100% funding amount. Uh, the 1.8 billion in one-time funding, I'll just mention right now, Orange County Department of Ed will not let us budget for us for that, similar to last year because it's so unknown. Uh, but we'll get more information at the May revision. We're fully anticipating in increased accountability in the LCAP and how we fund. And we've been working very closely with their instruction services this year in the business department to carefully align our supplemental dollars. So small, it's going to be a big deal I think, going forward for us. Special ed uh, is increased by the COLA, which is not very much, about fifteen dollars for ADA, but it is an increase. And you said fifteen. Fifteen. Yes. Um, that's a state average. It's yes. going to be different depending on your supplement. Um, and then, of course, you know there's a lot of potential changes in CTE, or at least discussion, and so we're hoping it moves away from the governor's budget proposal that we funded through community colleges, and just continues back with our career technical budget rates. Key factors for us with the governor's budget, no effect on this year's revenue, although our property tax went up, the state budget doesn't really affect us. As I mentioned, one-time funding we cannot account for, but we will um, keep uh, our ear to the ground to see if we can do it before our June approval of the budget. Um, there are changes, and they're having hearings regarding special ed funding and equalization, and so we're going to hopefully hear more about that in the revision as well, which we'll bring back. And the STIRS and PERS contributions that we pay for on behalf of employees continues to rise. That was not addressed in the budget. So you'll see that comes on our budget planning as well. 
So one of our highlights, we're tracking about what we thought. Um, it's always good to be accurate. I think it's um, like one of our primary goals in the business office, even though it's projections and we know they're not going to be right, as close as to not being, or as close to 100% is always a goal for us. Uh, we've improved our protocols and procedures. We have new handbooks and manuals related to fees, donations, and booster club management that, from our perspective, puts us in a better place and puts them in a better place. We want to protect our community members as well. And increased strength. Thank you uh, for supporting the transfer of 250000 to our basic aid differential fund, 17. So what's next? Tonight, we're going to recommend that we uh, get a positive certification for our second interim report as we're showing if we can meet our financial obligations this year and the next two. And we'll come back in May after the May revision with more information. That'll help us refine our budget in early June before we bring it back to you in late June for approval and then kick off a great new fiscal year in July. So with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. Do you have any questions on this item? <laughs> <laughs> I just looked that way. I wasn't really <laughs> Thank you all. Um, favor. Aye. Opposed? Carries by vote. 
Action item 20, approval of the course of study for the Unity Unified District Secondary Schools for the 2018-19 school year. Yes, thank you. So I bring forward um, the course of study for the following school, school year for our secondary schools. It includes additions um, brought forward to the curriculum council process. Um, those additions will, will only show up on the master schedule um, based on enrollment numbers and teacher credential verification, but uh, I also included in here our deletions.
what we look for, the types of knowledge is really important, the order in which we teach students. So, for example, we always begin with conceptual, then we move to procedural, then we move to relational knowledge, which is application of that knowledge. So, um, it's, he also helps guide the um, guide the discussions so that as we get to higher level math classes, it's in context and why it's so important to build conceptual understanding and the integration of those math practices. Does that help? It helps, but so he's he's walking with this group of math teachers, and he's not. Is he saying anything when they're in the classroom, or is the discussion more after? Uh, yes, he will point out things, help answer questions. What do we see on the wall? So it helps reflect okay. this practice. Yes. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, 122. Approval update the district plan for providing educational services for still students. So this is uh, the county's plan to provide services for expelled students. If, uh, their expectation we bring this forward to you. As districts insert their pedagogies and practices at the tail end of this event. So we have done that beginning on page 12. talked about service gaps. Um, there weren't very many places for K-5, but there weren't very many students. It's true. Yeah. K-4, 5 up. Yeah, there, there are. I wanted to know, um, this is just a question, for students that are expelled, they're not counted in when we put out our graduation number? How do they work as far as percentage of students that graduate? Depends on when they're expelled. Um, if a student is expelled um, at the beginning of their senior year, they would count against the high schools, uh, depending if the student graduates or not graduates. Um, they're tied to the, the school uh, that they start their senior year in. Mm -hmm. If the student uh, was to be expelled at the end of their junior year um, and finish their junior portion of their junior year in access, and uh, then they would services uh, when we brought West to Kishnake Park you know, um, two years ago. Uh, we would like to begin planning with them again to provide um, data team coaching and um, potential keynote, although we may seek an, an outside keynote, uh, but we would like to engage in a contract with them so we can begin to plan for our August professional development days. Public comments? Anybody have more questions? Discussion. Obviously, we need this because yeah. what Mike just said. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This is This is. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Here yeah. 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 So I had to really wait yeah. how long it had been. Well, well I think it's that you lose track. Right. Right. Well, yeah. 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 So it's time. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries by bill. Our next item is uh, first reading of board policies. <laughs> uh, again, February 9th. Uh, appreciate the board taking the time to uh, attend the special meeting and uh, review uh, the 21 policies that are here before you tonight. Uh, this again has been commented previously. Uh, this is a Possible way for us to have a discussion uh, as a group around policies. Um, it's focused and uh, we can have our, our attorneys present and speak to you with the questions that arise during the time. So, uh, with 
that. Um, I recommend uh, simply a first read if there's any edits uh, or changes that uh, you would like to announce. But we can make an adjustments for the second read. Uh, Thank you. Public comment? motion to bring um, policies that have been reviewed at a substantial meeting with um, month to 21 as a person to bring it back to the second reading. Any specific All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I, think, I just think that that process is really yeah. good. That we have in total involvement in a concentrated moment. Very focused. Yeah. We know it's very important. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and I had the chance to go to El Moro and observe um, some GoBots following Henry Tubman, <laughs> Henry Tubman's, es Harry Tubman's yeah. escape route and uh, walk through the revolution and Chinese New Year. And so that was just fun to see what everybody's doing. And then I have a request from you guys. Um, I, um, I'm, not the only one. I'm concerned about our, our suspensions. And so many schools now are doing in-house suspensions. They're doing it in a way, those students that usually get suspended are hurting. And so they're working with them on anger management or if they've been disruptive or bullying or drugs or whatever it is, they are working with those students to not just be punitive, but to actually help them learn and become better. And I think with um, Dr. Keller and all his vast knowledge, and our SSS people, that that would be an area, those are kids we know have, are having problems to really figure out a way to work with. I know that it, it might be expensive, but maybe we can figure out some other ways. Um, so I'm just looking to see if anybody else agrees that they would like to. So you're asking to have uh, an examination made of We've done it before of doing the house suspension. Okay. Case by case basis. Would that be your, kind of depending on the so what we talked about the severity, the, right? That, right. I mean, and it, it, obviously it's not going to be somebody who's in the dangerous. Right, 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 right. We're not yeah. talking about that, but we're talking. I'm, I'm talking about whether, however, it, I think Dr. Keller can figure out how to handle it, whether it's reading a book and discussing it, or a group, or, you know, there's a lot of online so things. focus than what I would be able to do. We had in-house suspension before. Our, our emphasis at that time was that we wanted, because of where we live, and with a lot of parents employed, that it was, okay, I got a great day off school, I'm just going to go hang out at Oak Street. Right. Right. We wanted them to not lose a day of instruction. Right. So the focus was really on that, and we had some, I think, some concern from teachers about how do we provide the materials for those students when they're not in the classroom. But it was really that focus, and I can't think of the reasons why it went away, but there was some issues with it. And But it was really, what you're asking for is something different. I'm asking I think for all, more help for all, students. But all students who are socially who, emotional. But all students who get a suspension, I don't think, would fall into that category. And so, so, I mean, some kids just make a poor choice, so, and it's basically like right. they get trouble. But they, there wouldn't be a lot of over, overarching issues. When we had our protocol discussion, we have we would need consensus among the board to work on to, it, to, to look at that. We, we could plan and in that right. time. was dealing, and I don't know whether you left before we had that discussion at that protocol. Oh, and we needed was, we need to have understand how much staff time, and if they feel right now with everything going on, I mean, not that it went, might not take place, but that's the feeling that we need. And I don't know that you can give that off the top of your head. Yeah, I, I probably could. I think the best um, intermediary step would simply for us, because we don't suspend that many students, mm -hmm. for just to do a quick review of, of the students that have been suspended more recently. What um, what have we done? Not necessarily in-house, but alternatives to suspension. I think in-house is, is one alternative to mm -hmm. suspension, potentially. But we do other alternatives mm -hmm. to suspension. So um, I probably... Uh, can have staff look really quickly at because it begins a small number of students who have been suspended and what would be the window of those students that would potentially qualify for an alternative to suspension and what might that look like. Um, I can provide that in a degree of some sort. I don't think that would take very much time. Developing a full in-house program would be obviously more robust, um, but I think it would require a little more thought into what is currently the issue and how many students are we talking about mm -hmm. um, and before we create a solution. So some, right. what's the story? Someone right. to right. I, right. right. I support what's the story? data collection. Yeah. Then I think right. that informs us right. what are the issues, but um, yeah. Yeah. So so I think the data collection is with actual numbers to what we're talking about. Right. So I'll start with, I, the I last four years, years or something. Yeah. Yeah. We do that the last several years, look at yeah. the whole number of students. We've seen a decline in the suspension rate, which is great. I think it's because yeah. we work at our schools, the PDIS work. And we do a lot of alternative suspension as it currently stands. 
Um, and I've had this uh, staff that's provided that to me in, in previous years, but all we can do is a quick audit of current and see where do we stand. Because some students are mm -hmm. students that we do send a J, uh, mm -hmm. which is an alternative mm -hmm. suspension. We wouldn't in-house them. We yeah. Yeah, that's what they're right. uh, uh, probably go to. And then the others are at times uh, situations where we're able they may need to be removed, but there are some where we may say this would be a good opportunity. What are we doing as an alternative suspension? It might not be, it might be an educational activity. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to class and do this on the, on the side. Uh, mm -hmm. There are a lot of options for that, especially yeah. uh, for students who might be uh, plagiarizing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a mm -hmm. great learning opportunity there for students. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and when it gets to that level, so um, we can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you also give us the data on the numbers that we're already provide for alternatives? Mm -hmm. so we have that. Yeah. I noticed in um, Alicia's report, one of the things that they mentioned there was it was better to have in-house in suspensions if kids weren't dangerous and to look at, at ways to do that. Right. I think that's a generalization for it was for a generalization Orange, Orange County, County, County which serves yes. a very different right. population in many ways than, than we necessarily serve. Maybe you took account. Yeah. Well, well I just meant it was part of what she was talking about, not her yeah. personal report. Right. Because that's county, the county information. You knew what I meant, right? <laughs> so I'll, I'll start with that and we'll start with one week and then we can uh, follow up from there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, it hit me again, too. when. Uh, we said for every dollar we spend, that's what you know. Mm -hmm. It saves us a lot of dollars. Yeah. Okay. Um, just want to comment on the uh, Thurston PTA meeting. The students were there to present on the electives that they take. And uh, they do a great job. You can send them to the, uh, the night for the parents when they come because they were so articulate. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> It was, it's really it's really good to see that from the, obviously doing something right to provide those skills that they have as eighth graders, and they even waited patiently. <laughs> they listened to make some other reports. Uh, at the I attended uh, dinner ten. I was stopped by the DLAC meeting for a while, and Yvonne, right? Yvonne, Yvonne was really nice to come over and just stand right by me and translate. I mean, uh, <laughs> that was great. She's but serious. they were doing LCAP. And they were, and that's an identified group, mm -hmm. and they were really having a vibrant discussion on how some, you know, they have students that they feel like are cheating, and how were the teachers trained to identify those students, and were they really, were their kids really being identified? It was really very interesting. Um, so we're really, I'm just sharing that with you guys because we really are reaching out as as LCAP is asking for to those uh, identified groups. Um, I also saw the students work the night they were at the Code Gallery with both students and their ceramics teacher. Uh, Bridget wasn't there because she was at the fourth grade, which I was able to go to that too. And I had my driver drive me around. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, was, and the high school principal was, was there. Packed down. It was packed. Oh, I was there later because I went oh, to the other one first. I, uh, uh, and the, it, the kids loved that because it was a matter of pictures. There were so many fourth graders, they were all over the place. And they have some food for them, which they love. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank our district people who were brave enough and un unselfish enough to carry our banner to free. Spirit and, and those patriotic <laughs> pins they handled out, handed out, so thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, I got TK to read to at El Moro, so if you think it is cute, they oh, are oh, really oh, cute. Oh, <laughs> oh, Boy, I, read it. Right. I love going in that class. And they are, there's, they're just, uh, let's see. Well, I want to ask this question directly, sort of, for Jeff. I was at the city. The city had a meeting on disaster preparedness, mm -hmm. and during that presentation, he mentioned that the high school wasn't really going to be a Red Cross site anymore because the, they had to use the second one. In that. And I'm thinking we had one major catastrophic fire disaster, and everybody went to the high school, and then they did have to leave when that became threatened. But my understanding is it still was. Identify your Depends person. on the disaster, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, where else would one be? <laughs> I know. I don't know. Okay, well, it, it's truly depend dependent. If it's a fire, mm -hmm. they don't want to do what we had happen in previous times where we put our folks at the high school and then turn them and move them out. 
so they would prefer that we get people out of the city as safely and quickly as possible. So it, and it de so dependent on the situation. So if it is one where make that clear. Yeah, if it's one that we really have to um, get folks out, we will. Um, and if it's something where we can't shelter there, we would. But it's their de decision as well. They would. That's my cross. Doesn't mean we wouldn't be in you know, for our students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, Then actually, uh, Ryan did uh, Susie Q tonight. I know they, they planned that on the same night we had yeah. a meeting, so, so I kind of right. thought they didn't check their calendar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, our next regular meeting will be Tuesday, March 27th at 6 in the boardroom, and then after the motion to adjourn. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you.